uh, been through the major leagues and back. Uh, I was very open about that, at least a lot, a lot of things I've read about her online. And I was just talking to Evan all fair about how much she loves baseball and baseball stadiums and baseball players, I assume. I'm Craig. That's Evan. Nice to meet you, Lisa. It's very nice to meet you, too, as well. I've met quite a few of your listeners uh, on Twitter today. I'm sure that you have. <laughs> uh, yes, they you say have. a lot of trigger words to me. A trigger word to me is I'm a huge fan. That's I know I can't say many words, so we're going to call it an FMR. Yes. We're off air. I'll explain to you what that means. I'm going to write that and, down. And that same person that uses the trigger words will then send three back-to-back tweets and then ask me to follow them. <laughs> You've already over-tweeted on my main timeline. Why would yeah. I allow you access into the DM <laughs> where you are just going to go ham and I already feel it? So yeah. you know who I'm talking about out there. I think they know. <laughs> wow. I think you one know. of them is sitting in the other room right over there, as a matter of fact. His name is Tom. Um, I'm trying to figure out FM right now. I'll explain off oh, the air, okay. as will Lisa. Uh, first word, feverish. He, oh. he doesn't get Oh, I, get, I do uh, get it. And by the way, I own the domain, so don't even try it, okay? I own the domain. Uh, Lisa's uh, social media handle is the real Lisa Ann. So you were talking to Evan off air that you, know, you think baseball's made a terrible mistake in what they've uh, done this week with this lockout. So you, are you a sports fan beyond the sexual stuff? We'll get to it. Are you a big fan? Uh, you did not realize that I was on a Lisa Ann Does Fantasy on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio for seven years. I had my own show. How about that? I, did I not cover know that. fantasy football, fantasy basketball, and fantasy baseball. What are you best at? Like, what's your expertise? If you fantasy had to pick one? football because easiest, it's right? such it's such a condensed season. It's it's just that you know baseball is so grueling. Daily lineup. That's what changes. makes it awesome, right? Listen, day in and day out. Listen, some of us have other activities, you know. <laughs> okay, but fair enough. I am a huge <laughs> sports fan. I grew up in eastern Pennsylvania. My mom was a basketball mom at Lafayette College. Okay. So we went to every home game. Got so it. I grew up really understanding basketball and loving basketball. At that time, Butch Van Bredekoff was the coach. And my dad, uh, we saw him on Sundays and we watched football. So those were my sports growing up. I didn't pick up baseball till I started doing sports radio and I wanted to be on air all year. So you got to cover baseball. So how did you decide, like when you were doing adult entertainment stuff, was the dream one day I'm going to do sports? It wasn't, but, you know, when you're on the road, you get to visit a lot of awesome shows like yours. Right. And so a lot of them are sports shows, the morning drive or whatever. It's always awesome. You get home for the club at 4. They're like, we're picking you up at 6 for right. the radio show. You're like, thanks. thanks um, and I just realized the flow that I had. And so customers would come into the club, and we'd have these conversations. I'm naked. They're not. And we would just break down games and sports. That and is so weird to me. People started. <laughs> like you're dancing naked and the guy's like, what do you think about second base? Like, <laughs> do you think we should trade Tim Tuffle? Like, what is it? Like, <laughs> That's the reference you made. Guys would come know. in on Saturday nights and have me set their lineups for fantasy cool, football. For real? For real? Wow. So that was my last year. So 2013, I started with Sirius. And I was still on the road for a couple of years after that. And I would... You know, every night, Saturday night, they hold up their phone. I'd see, like, Yahoo or whatever. You know, they played right. on, like, after the show, at my meet and greet, I will help you sit your How long did it take you doing the serious show for people to be like, she knows her stuff? It was pretty easy because I already had a ton of people from around the U.S. that had these conversations with me. Right. So they believed in me. I mean, there's still always going to be those people that will never believe that I actually watch sports for real or but that doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, that, that's not because you did porn. That's because you're a woman. It, There's still a sexism in sports. There's just the, still just the reality. a thing, right? Listen, but, I, have, I have a gambling problem. When I went to rehab, I was shocked that really? there were women there. Yeah, for real. And if for some reason, it never dawned on me women gamble. that women would gamble the way men do. Yeah. And I learned very quickly, while there are more men that do become compulsive gamblers, women are right there next to them. I never knew that. Well, and maybe we, that's like a chauvinistic view of the world, but until I saw it with my own eyes, I never knew that. Yeah, there are women that are really into gambling. It's an addiction thing, too. Like, some women go to shopping uh, recovery centers because they're yeah. just addicted to shopping. Were you addicted to sex? Not addicted to sex, though I do know a lot of people in the business that I'm always saying to them, like, when your day is done, you're going to be, you're going to need to go to treatment because you're addicted to sex. That's why you can do scenes five to seven days a week. Um, I was never addicted to sex. It was just, you know, it's an experience that you get to have on set in a safe place where there's consent and everybody knows who everybody is and there's testing. And a lot of the experiences I lived out on set were things that I would never be bold enough to do in my real life So you because so I don't you like people to, knowing where I live. You, but mm. you were able to to act a certain scene that if you were just dating a random guy, you never could have found, you never could imagine yourself 
doing the things that you did while acting. True. So you got to yeah. like create a version of yourself did you also, that you liked. Because uh, uh, I've, I've done some research. <laughs> Not by watching, but by reading. You did a lot of character acting in your time. Did you like doing that in those scenes? Um, the Sarah Palin Sarah stuff, right? Palin. That wasn't the one I was thinking of, actually. Oh, oh you were thinking about what? A realtor? Uh, a teacher? Again. A stepmom? Close. Uh, oh, the stepmom's always a big one. No, it was um, a, a, actually a famous a life, person. A lifeguard. No, a famous person. Tina Fey. Stephanie McMahon. Oh, you remember that <laughs> one. He loves wrestling. Oh, you remember? With China. Yes. Rest China, the, the passed, passed away. away yeah. Joni Laura was in it. Yep. Yes. Really? And so since we were playing that we were related, Right. right we couldn't touch in the scene. So she was working with the guy and I couldn't be touching her. Like it was this whole like, right. which is weird because when you're on a set, you have to look at the director who's taking this so seriously. Like, you know, because there's a relation here. And I'm like, you realize this is all fake. Like, what does it matter? Like, why am I not able well, to do this? Like, no one's going to critique the movie because you really, touched right. And, and directors get so into it. And it's always hard being talent and not saying to them, like, you know, nobody's going to notice that, right? Well, I think in that, I swear to God, I know you guys are going to make fun of me. I really haven't seen it. I promise. I, if you did, you did, you didn't, you didn't. No, did no, it, I, would, I wouldn't lie. I would uh, tell you. You might lie in this one. Vince How McMahon. How could you not want to watch China if you're a wrestling fan? <laughs> oh, I mean, if she's any, a big girl, though. I don't want to say what I'm May thinking. May she rest right in peace. Yeah, she could have picked me up and thrown me with one hand. Yeah, she could have hurt but you. She wasn't but she was sweet as hell. Yeah, sweet she unfortunately hell. had some demons she, she could have really, really her, did. Wasn't a fake Vince McMahon in it too, which is weird. Yes. Vince and Stephanie. How'd you turn this into a wrestling conversation? Because I read about because I do my research. Lisa Ann is here. Check her out at The Real Lisa Ann. She has a book out as well called The Life Back Out and a podcast, The Lisa Ann Experience. So listen, our audience, we do this show because you know, women have had a thing for athletes, and it's always fascinating to us. When you read the stories about this guy, that girl, that kind of thing. But uh, I, I was not making it up. Like, there's a claim that you've been with over 100 pro athletes. And I wonder, is there a... An, well, is that true, first of all? Yeah. I really haven't done the math, but let's just say, okay. Let's just take it. <laughs> all right. Okay. We're not going to argue it, right? Oh. Do you have a preference historically? Like, were you more into NBA guys or NFL guys or baseball or hockey? Looking back on your life, if you had to pick one. I would say probably NBA first, NFL second, uh, MLB third. I stay away from UFC altogether. Um, yeah, that would be the why? range. Why did that? Why eh, are the rankings like that? You know, the like Christy situation scarred me heavily. Uh, I've seen I don't blame a lot you for of that one, by the way. Yeah, that was that was a tough one. Um, the thing is this, and this is a great topic because random dudes think all day that because I did scenes that they have a chance to hook up with me. Right. And really doing scenes ruins you sexually for the average man because he's never going to be able to do the things the way that the guy did in the scenes. And this is where athletes come into play. They're physically fit. You know, they're young. Uh, they have endurance. Like they can do all the things uh, a male performer could do in a scene. So there's just an allure. And also, they're busy. So they're not going to be, be bothering you. You know, there's you can look at their schedule. It's like a it's like a guy dating a single mom. I call them right. calendar moms because you know when she's busy because you know her kids' schedule, right? So you like I can get her Tuesdays I and Thursdays. Yeah. You can look at a player's schedule. But like, great, I only will see him this, what? this, this, and this. Perfect. Do right. do did stats matter to you because you're a fan? Stats, Some do, stats. stats do matter. Yeah. <laughs> Two in stats particular. do matter. <laughs> no stats on the court on the so field. So you would not sleep with like the twelfth guy on the bench. You have to sleep with the guy that played. Right. Right. Because it's beneath your. And by the way, if Lee Sands dating like the backup backup point guard, that's a bad look for you. I agree. Right. And also, where's your motivation? Right. You know what, what if, I mean? What and if, also, if there was something going on with somebody and they started to really slack, I would give them such a hard well, time that, by tech. That's I what I'm curious that. about. And I hate, to, I hate to use a specific yeah, just person. Be like, oh, man, how would yeah. you like it if I was ranked number 20 porn star? Like, <laughs> He'd still you know probably sleep with you, like, but yeah. he just wouldn't he tell his friends. <laughs> you know, much. If a guy's having a bad year, you know, Francisco Lindor in baseball just had a bad year. You Julius Randle is having a bad year. Now, I know he's married and all that, but... Would that affect you? Like when you talk, like guys having a bad year, I ain't sleeping with this guy. Well, Focus at that on point, the court, man. they're not as focused. So yeah, that's where the distraction comes into play. And also, you know, you want them as a fan of sports to just mm -hmm. be playing better. So to even know that they want to make social time when they should be working on their game, I have no time. Would for you that. critique a guy in bed not about their sexual prowess, but about what they did on the field? Not during the actual engagement. So you'd wait till it was over. And Afterwards, then say, by the way, uh, three turnovers tonight? <laughs> uh, maybe i see your teammate next week. You did live your life by the Andy Savoria rule. It's from the movie Bull Durham where 
you would not be with more than one guy in any particular team at one sure. time. Yep. So if there were times though in your life when guys may have gotten traded, oh, so and then you had to make a decision. Yeah. Now I got two guys on one team. Yeah. How did you decide which guy to go with? I usually allowed a cooling off period. I can remember when these things would happen, man. Free agency. Maybe in the some NBA. names Everything so we understand shuffling. who we're talking no names. about. No names. Maybe some names. Nah, you know what? Maybe nah, though. I like the fact that the only thing people know about my personal life is what's on Pornhub. Like, that's just perfect for That's me. not a little, You can though. search out right there, and that's enough. That can you at least junk. do this? Who's, like, the most famous guy you think you've ever been with? You're just not great at prying information. I'm just getting started. I'm like a vault, <laughs> like, and I'm I not, like, it. Elaine it. with the pink schnapps on Seinfeld vault. I'm a real vault, okay? So, would you, would you ever put in a book? Would you do a tell-all? No, and you know, I've self-published both of my books for the main reason that when you go to a publisher, they want That's you what they want, they want sure. salacious details, right? And I won't do it because people's lives change and maybe they have family by now. You right. know, that was a different time. Like I don't need that coming back up in their life. Has anyone you've been with uh, been elected to the Hall of Fame in their respective sport? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. Multiple Hall of Famers. Well, I mean, like I've been at this game since the early I, 90s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You probably root for a couple of them. For sure. Not, <laughs> listen, I don't want to say names, but a couple guys immediately come to mind who I know would have hit on you for sure. And don't forget, when you started, there was an Instagram. Oh, no. It was and so DMs And players and texts. did have fun houses. There were, there, and oh, they yes. did have party houses in their neighborhood. Yes. yes. The Dallas and Cowboys no one famously can did. get caught because there's no phone. What the Dallas Cowboys did, of those of you that may not know the story, they had a thing called the White House. Yeah. And it was a private gated community where guys chipped in. And it was like a million dollar house, beautiful house, pool yeah. the whole bit. And guys would bring gals and yep. have parties. Not always, you know, what you think the most sordid things. But it was like a hideaway for guys where they couldn't get in any trouble because it was right. legitimately a gated, multi-million dollar home yep. community. So what was the White House like? Awesome. You know, they actually mimicked it on the first season, I think, of a uh, football show, HBO, with The Rock. Why is it slipping me right oh, now? Oh, um... Playmakers. He, no. Ballers. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Playmakers yeah. was the only one that I got canceled. I was so excited that I thought I you know. had it. I was excited. I thought he, I had is it. Is he yeah. always one off? Like yes. one off? Okay. Uh, so on a, a lot of things. Way off usually. You never heard of the video game Centipede? What? I saw the. Okay, your Twitter poll today was riveting. A really good stuff. <laughs> I knew I was stepping into a show that could potentially change my life. No, wow. no. Like I wanted to call my agent and go, things are really going to change after today. What was this about? You never heard of he Centipede? He never heard of Centipede. I, never he's played much younger Atari? than me. That's Atari, right? right? I, 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 you know, arcade-sized video games? Right. We you and I are closer ones. in age than he is. And I was grew more up, of that's a fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm in my late 30s. He's a child. I am a child. Well, right. which one would you have voted for? How old are you? 53. Okay, I turned 50 two months from today. Oh, congratulations. Exactly 60 days. Yeah, so we grew up in the 70s, yeah. late yeah, 70s. You, you voted for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You did. No, I did not. I didn't vote. I wanted to ask what this was about first before I chose Okay, sides. now what's your choice? I didn't want to. Centipede. Oh. Do you find <laughs> that one particular type of athlete is lazier uh, than others? Like when it comes to pleasing you? No. Like is there a stereotypical No, because remember, deep down inside, player? even though they're a stud at whatever they, they, they play, they're still a fan of mine. So they're still doing the work. You know what I mean? Right. There's still something. So there. let me ask you this. Assuming the majority of those guys knew who you were, obviously. Everybody does, yeah. Yeah, so I wonder, like, <laughs> have you ever met with a, met a guy who you wanted to be with who had no idea who you were? Not in the last 20 years. Really? No. And even more so, of course, with the internet, right? Like, in the 90s, you could kind of pull it off because it was the VHS and people had sure. to go to adult books. So if you remember, you remember... Yeah. They made us look so different on the covers. Like, our yes. hair. There was, like, a lady that did your hair for three hours. It was, like, hours. a bad, like, rom-com book cover. Yeah, it was, like, huge hair and right. so much makeup. Like, you didn't look anything like the person inside the box cover, which was always very upsetting. Now you get the free 30-second thumbnail uh, yeah. video. Right, right, that right. they you just pulled exactly. from the screen. Right. You're like, that's going to be the cover. We're going to put some graphics that look really cheesy Everyone on it. Everyone says you can't make any money in it, but I think you'd made money. You did okay, right? Yeah, I got in at the golden time. I mean, the 90s, the money was just very different. But there is new money to be made now. And there's tons of people making crazy money because of all the instant access to applications like OnlyFans and like clips for sale. Do you do sale. OnlyFans or no? So I recycle my library on OnlyFans. So you have to so, do anything new and you already did it anyway. Why not double yeah, monetize Yeah, and I it? own, you know, almost 30 years of content. And right. I bought a lot of content back from companies that were going under when the internet started. So I bought my scenes back. I bought the paperwork. Got it. And, 
So I recycle my content and then I do little update videos and I chat in the DM from time to time. Um, I'm fascinated by the trends. Like every dude wants you to rate his thing. And I don't understand why that's a thing. You get a lot of people why? say like, And they'll pay for it. They'll pay this. you a hundred bucks to oh rate it. God. Really? You got to bust out hold the thesaurus and you got to get crafty. <laughs> hold on. Time and then out. you criticize you... the room and the lighting and Wait you tell them how to shoot You it just better. said a lot of things I need to un <laughs> unpack. Guys would pay you a hundred bucks for you to send them adjectives describing yes. their manhood. Yes. And they pay you for that. Yes. Why? So, this, so that they can tell so their buddies, Lee Sand thinks my <laughs> junk looks like blah, 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 blah. Okay. That's it, fascinating. Now, let me ask you this. So if you say there's money, there's still a lot of money to be made. But so you're I still was, monetizing old stuff. I am monetizing old stuff. I still get to go to events like Exotica's and, you know, I'll sell my books there. I'll and you'll sell sign photos pictures there. And I'll stuff. sign pictures and stuff. Will you so. still sleep with pro athletes or no? Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't I? I did not give that up for Lent at all. You did not. No, When's the I last didn't. time you have slept with a pro athlete? She's in New York, I mean, so know, it could be yesterday. Yeah, but it wasn't yesterday. It was, was it within the last six months? Yes, of course. Was it, it within was. the last month? Uh, no, no. Have you ever decided to undergo a period of like a celibacy, like a self-cleansing period? No, have you? Or no, no, I avoid <laughs> like you? the plague. <laughs> no. Evan does sometimes. <laughs> During right. those things, are you allowed to pleasure yourself or is yeah, there you're, nothing? You're always allowed to do that. <laughs> That's you? why God <laughs> gave you fingers. <laughs> okay, right? this is I have an opposable thumb for one reason. That's when you it's become not to hold the C four can. That's when you it's become when I'm alone. An FMer but during that period of time. I suppose. I get you. Yep. An um, FMer has a different approach. <laughs> Let me like, ask you this. When they recognize me, it's different. It's like you can feel their heart starting to race from all the endless hours they've watched. Have you, you can see them start to sweat and you know, like right away, you're like, all right. We're going to have to make this one quick, like say hello. <laughs> right. I'm going to shake his hand. It's going to be just slimy with sweat. Uh, and uh, he's going to put his arm around me to take uh, a photo, and his uh, armpit's going to be hot and sweaty. Wow. I'm like, well, that guy committed. And you know what the worst one is? That and when the, they put their arm around you, and you can feel them shaking. Oh, uh, yeah. Always. That is brutal. Shake, shake. That's a tough one. Like, buddy, let's go. Next. <laughs> I'm like, Next. breathe. Breathe. Um, have you been with an active New York athlete in the last year? That's a great Boy, question. This is this is a lot of questions. The answer is yes. Think about that. Let's just yes. say yes to make it easier. Yeah, the answer is a definite yes. Let me ask you this: <laughs> You are a smart woman. <laughs> yes. You're an attractive woman. Well, thank you. Do I appreciate you, it. At any aspect, have you ever looked back and said, "I if uh, I have regrets, if I could do it again, I wouldn't have chosen that line of work because I could have been successful doing anything." No, because though I could have been successful doing anything, and I believe that. The travel and, you know, the fact that I was able to be financially free at such a young age and set up my future, whereas now I can kind of coast through life. The fact that I got to travel the world and fill a passport on someone else's dime. You know, people are paying you to fly places. I've been to Australia like nine, ten times, like all these different countries. There's no way in any other career I would have had. And the dinners, you go to these things and everybody fussing over you. And it's just so remarkable. Well, if, if you were coming up in the industry now in this era, would you still have enjoyed it as much? I don't know. I don't think so. I was really lucky. The 90s, the shooting was different. The people were, you know, the people were different. It wasn't as aggressive. You know, the internet creates such a demand for content that's like next level aggressive. And, and anyone that was with never... the cameras now is star. Right, theory. right. Hey, did, so it's a bit harder. But so, I... no, I wouldn't change a thing because mm -hmm. this experience, like, I sat down during the pandemic and I organized all my hard drives for loading content on OnlyFans. Where none of them were sticky, right? None. Okay. But I was laughing over the fact that, like, oh, my gosh, I've done so much with my life. I had gone to Budapest for almost a month and shot there with all these foreign performers. Did I... I found all these photos from there. And I was like, I've relived this, like, You've had a full 30 life. years of, like, doing cool shit. You know? So, that's right. That's fine. Sorry. Don't panic. You can dump it. She knows <laughs> not the curse. It just came out. It's fine. Did a Middle Eastern sheik ever offer you an obscene amount of money or jewelry? Always. To go over there with like, with like a harem of other women and wait like to have someone knock on your door. Always. I would never. You but never did it. I will tell you but this. But that, that happens. That's oh real. Oh, my gosh. I saw it firsthand. <laughs> I was in Ibiza with friends, and we were on this private island at this restaurant that's just like on a sandbar. And this huge ship pulls up. My friend's like, oh, that's the sheik. He's got a business meeting. He's going to be over there. They open up this area outside of the boat, and they pin it off. And all these women come off this ship, and they're like... Playing like beach, I, they were frolicking. I've never seen women frolic. Like I saw women frolicking like young, in the water. Women, right? All young, all beautiful, and there would be fifty of them. Yeah. 
And he comes rolling off because, of course, I need to see what he looks like. You know, he's good. He tests those girls like every day. He's like yeah. really fanatical about drawing their blood, blood, which so is so you were, weird. Yeah. Do you remember like what they offered you to do that? Oh, gosh. Obscene, it, right? Obscene amounts of money. But like, and I still to this day won't go to Dubai because I just don't want the passport stamp. Um, I fear that it's going to it's gonna link me to that because that's yeah. where it usually starts. They usually go to Dubai. Right. But um, it was wild. I was like, wow, this is real. Like I thought, you know. I always thought those emails and those contacts were like the guy that tells you no, it's uh, real. he's going to give you a million dollars and you sign over a check. I thought it was all fraud. This right, is right. crazy book. It's like, book's probably 20 years old. I remember reading it called You'll Never Make Love in This Town Again. And it was these two young kind of wannabe actresses, models, who were on the scene in L.A. literally 20 years ago, and they were approached. Like, they were sleeping with famous you know, Hollywood stars sure. and this and that, and they're kind of telling their story that you won't tell. And they said they got approached by agents saying... Hey, you're going to go to Dubai for a month. You're going to make $350,000 yes. and come home with diamond necklaces yeah. and jewelry. And you may or may not have ever be called because mm. there's going to be 50 other women right. there too. And every night you're going to drink and have a party. And if they knock on your door, you know, that's the night you're sleeping with the sheik. Yep. Or is his guys, I guess, right? right? Wow. And you said no to that. Yeah, I just couldn't do What's it. What's the biggest offer you ever turned down monetarily? Oh, that's a good question. I would say probably two hundred and fifty k. Me too. No yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. No, I turned down ten grand to be on the cover of Playgirl. Really? Yeah. Shut I up. I regret it too. Why would you not? The do company that? didn't want me to do it. This company? No, nah, different company. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that would have been really, fun for you. And like, I, I was telling Evan in the contract, and it was the strangest contract I ever signed. It said no full frontal because I wasn't going to do that, and it insisted. That I had a shit, and it, they wrote out both naked butt cheeks, <laughs> you know, on the Because they don't want a side shot. They want right. to be sure you knew that you were giving that. Yeah, and they offered me 10 grand to do it. I think it had just gone, you know, they weren't doing monthly uh, publications anymore because they weren't doing well. So I think they were like a quarterly magazine at the yep. time, and they offered me 10 grand. I re it's the one regret I have in my radio career of not doing it. Because I should have done it. Because the thing is, it's not even in that moment. It's when you're 80 and you get to have that <laughs> right. thing on your coffee table to entertain your friends. Like, it's looking you back on nobody it. Nobody would have wanted it on a coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> it's just but your dude, ass. But what's amazing about it is that my vanity kicked in. Yeah. I started going to the gym like a beast <laughs> because I was prepared to yes. do it. So I'm getting all like, not ripped cut to up, Jack, but yeah, like, out, I'm in the gym every day. I'm like sparring every day. I'm lifting tires. And then they're like, we'd rather you not do it. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Dang right. Yeah, so. Lisa Ann is here. The book is The Life Back. The Lisa Ann Experience. She has uh, made love to 16 New York professional athletes. Uh, from the Knicks <laughs> to the Yankees <laughs> to the Mets. Range hockey players must love you. New York Rangers hockey Remember players. Remember hockey fourth on her list in terms of well, ranking the listen, athletes. Listen, there's one so. ex-New York Ranger who I you do. famously hooked up Very with. Very slight. Michael Delzato. I never hooked up with him. Oh, stop the See, that, lies, that Lisa. That boy stalked me and asked me a million times, and I would block his phone number. And he for would real? Reach for out. real? You go and search our story on the interweb. You said no to Michael Delzato. Yes. And he stalked you. He just, he would keep, here's what guys do. They keep asking you again and again, because mm -hmm. no doesn't mean no. And then after about 25 times, they then come around and ask you to introduce you to one of their friends. So I posted his posts to me. I posted his <laughs> messages on Twitter. Yeah. And a bunch of other girls banded on. And they were like, yeah, he does this to me. And oh he's so God. annoying. <laughs> I've, I've never Why did him. you say no to begin with with him? Just didn't find him attractive or something? I think we initially met, like I was doing an event and I, I was, it was like an impassing thing, right? So it was like, oh, well, we'll link another time, right? Um, and then once, you know, sometimes that's bad. Like this is why he one night persistent. stands work because you don't get to know how annoying the person is till you've already done it and they're out of your life. For him, we didn't get to do the one night stand. So, so we had to actually text and I was like, man, this dude's annoying. <laughs> and also athletes can be very narcissistic, right? And they have a lot of like, you know, exactly their hours. Oh, they're on the plane. He's going to be texting for four hours. Like this is really uh, annoying. Hmm. I don't have the same four hours as him. Like, so yeah, never. How nope. about a quarterback? NFL quarterback? Yes. Yes. Starting NFL quarterback for New York yes. football team? She didn't say New York. I'm not going to say. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. that You're a Giants fan by trade. I'm a Jets fan. Oh, even sadder. Yeah, it's very sad. It's yeah. very sad, right? Let me ask you a question. What was Mark Sanchez like when you were with him? I wasn't with him, but he had great uh, hair. <laughs> didn't yeah. he have great hair? He was such a good-looking guy. Lisa Ann would have been too old at any stage of her life for Mark Sanchez. That I can tell you is a fact. Oh, yeah, because he likes him young. Is that why? <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. so last, funny. His last girlfriend who was a Jet I had to leave his apartment to take her SATs. <laughs>
Like, no joke. That's no. fantastic. <laughs> no okay, joke. okay. We're... All right, fantasy football. Yes. You're starting a fantasy football team with a current active quarterback. Who's your quarterback? Uh, am I going to get to draft two uh, so that I have a backup? I understand we'll that take right, draft right, that you can go two right later Right now, on I, don't, I don't have bye weeks in front of me, so I won't no, be able to tell you. about bye weeks. Um, you know, last year I went really heavy on the combo of Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow. I was in 25 leagues last year. I commissioned two. 25 um, leagues? Yeah, I hit it hard. I hit it really hard. How many did you win when you hit those? Uh, Everyone's four. never done that. Four? Four yeah, out of 25? Yeah, that's but it was a busy – I was also doing sports betting at the time, so I was really oh, – this year is going to be a focus year because I won't have as much going on. But I still like the Matthew Stafford pick, but I want to wait and see what happens. Like, where's Deshaun Watson going to go? Are we going to see him as fabulous as he was two years ago? Did that year off hurt him physically? Like, is it – you always wonder, like, sure. is it great to have him rested or are they out of rhythm? That's going to be a problem. Right. Um, I think Russell Wilson, the move to Denver is really interesting. It's going to be – tough for Seattle to really not face that they're just in a rebuild now. I'm sure their fans were very depressed. Aaron Rodgers is always incredible. So, but, but if you o- go with one, you're going to stick with Stafford for now. Just because I now, like but not offense. this year now, because now he's going to go earlier in the draft. Last year, nobody was taking Stafford. Last year, nobody was taking right. Cooper Cup. He would go higher right. for sure. And he had an awesome season. Oh, yeah. Like He'll nobody was, I, jump I, up now. We were thinking that Baker Mayfield was going to come to life. That's not happening. We're not going to drop Baker Mayfield this year. I, I do like to have a variance. I try to make sure that I don't have the same quarterback in more than 10 leagues. But I love that stafford Burrow combo last year. Was really good for me. Burrow I don't was see why so we excited. don't have you on every week during the football season talking uh, football. I'm down. I do a thing called Fantasy Football Fridays. But we're not um, going to pay you. That's okay. I, <laughs> I, I don't get paid I for the whole day. I like how you throw it out there. Just I, don't so get, just, I don't get paid just, for the whole day. I know the company. Like, we're not Nobody's paying. Nobody's yeah, coming like, your way. You could come in every Friday do a segment, but we ain't paying you. <laughs> I do shows all day during the football season, and I don't get paid. Where are you based, if you don't mind me asking? Here in New York City. Oh, so done. Consider yeah. it done. I also have a Comrex device, so I can patch in remotely with all the studios around the great. U.S. Fantastic. So it's clear as a bell. All right. But I do it because it's great exercise for me. Like, doing that day helps me really focus on and my lineups on Saturdays. your focus more than other sports. So. Yeah, for Fantasy. All right, so here's what we'll do. So uh, we can announce now. Lee Sand's going to join us this football no season. We're just making that clear, right? You can promote whatever you've going on. <laughs> no money. We will give you free coffee and a cup of water. Well, I don't it. know if we can supply that, but we'll look into it. I already have both. But so the good news I already is saw how well you are going to treat We it. do get pizza every Friday, so that's on the house. Okay. All right. All right. From where, though? So this fall, uh, Prince Street <laughs> Pizza, the best pepperoni pizza in town. It's fantastic. Um, all right, so this uh, fall, Lee Sand's going to join us. As our Friday football, fantasy football expert. That sounds fantastic. And you start to tell us any pro athlete you sleep with from here on out. That's a Obviously, the past is fair. I will not. Here's I mean, what you don't understand. That's a fair request, though. But here's Very what fair request. You will blow up my spot. Why would I blow the it up? The reason I get the best action is because I'm a trusted source. 20-plus years of never diming anybody out. I respect that. They, uh, I can't. Look, you're going to blow up my black book. But I give you one person. <laughs> I'm it, dead out of water. And then what am I going to do? I'm right. schlepping around trying to read the average Joe that's like, I'm a huge fan. Follow me. Like, oh. You're going to be like Comic-Con. Please. You're begging pimple-faced kids to sleep with exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's not a good so look. That's not. We can't do that. Don't do that to me. Don't All make right, that happen. But if a guy wronged you, then you would consider... You know. But we ne- look, Delzato and I never even hooked up. That's why I was like, yo, I'm calling you out just because you're annoying AF. Like... And he knew it. Has any athlete wronged you? Has you ever walked away from it saying, I, that son of a... I won't say who it is, but uh, someone did borrow <laughs> $200 from me because he's like, I didn't want to... I want to pick up some things and I don't want to go to the ATM. And I'm like, all right, whatever. And I, he's like, how much cash do you have? And I, was, I never tell anybody. I'm like, I have $200. Right. He's like, I'll take it. And then he didn't That's reach it? out to get it, give it back. So wow. I could never hook up with him again. NFL player? And I would never bring it up. A retired player. Retired NFL and I would player. Ne- retired, retired NBA player. player. NBA, I would never me. bring NBA it. Player. I would never bring it up because I'm like, if you borrow money from somebody, you should be calling them and saying, hey. Yeah. This was before PayPal I can't and all believe of that. Sam Cassell did that to you. That is Ugh. unbelievable. She's to not me. banging Sam Cassell. No. Yeah. no I Thank you. To. No. Please. He has no Beautiful. idea the cred I have. No. Come on. <laughs> Sam I did that on purpose. I apologize. Come no, on. I mean Larry Bird maybe, but not. <laughs> I mean that'd be like how about how about how about Cologne? You know what I mean? I could be his third family. You know what I'm saying? He's, yeah. like, he's, he's such true. a hero. Big to sexy, all of us. big bird, big sexy out there on the mound, just looking like a a, a bobblehead version of himself in real yeah. time. And then you find out he has this, and, and you know the waitress was very pretty that he had the second family with, and I, and nobody really came down on him hard no. in New York. He got that's away like, with oh, you know, it's because a he hit a home you know? run. He looked Steroids like a softball too. player. Yeah. That's it. If he came over to you, Big Bart said, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. 
All right. I don't, if him? he didn't say that, you know, he's intriguing to me. There's got to be something She would sign an autograph, but I mean, he could honestly smother you. Of course, yeah, but like would, there has yeah. to be something we don't Reverse know. Reverse cowgirls about all you're doing there. That's two about families. It. I mean, no, he was, do you have any children? I do. How many? A five-year-old and a year and a half-year-old. Ooh, so not two. getting much sleep. How about you? Yeah, I have four. I have wow, four. you yep. all multiplied. How yes, old are yours? Uh, 11 through 21. Yeah. Tough ages. Uh, any any girls? I have a daughter, yes. Very stressful, yeah. right? Well, she's the <laughs> oldest and it's different. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's different. Yeah. I overhear conversations I know nothing about. It's different. Yeah, I did. Yeah. The, the fear factor of Final teenagers. question for you. Okay. Did you ever fall in love and look back and go, man, that was the one. I let him get away. I was married. Really? Dude. In my 20s. Yeah? A regular guy. Regular dude, like yep. truck driver kind of thing? He was a bouncer at a club that I worked at. The old story. Yeah. The story in the books. And he showed up to pick me up, and it was a Monday night game. The club was letting me rearrange my show times because it right. was Cowboys playing the Niners. He had a Niners jersey on. And that at that time, it. I was so feisty. I called the club and I said, I'm not getting in the car unless your driver takes off that jersey. It's like, <laughs> I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. Wow, that was me in my early 20s. Yeah, I got you. And he loved that. He loved that he had to go down to the lobby. He had to right. use had the landline because it was the you. 90s. And they had to call it at the hotel. <laughs> And he had to take off the jersey. That's crazy. He had to that. change his shirt to <laughs> yeah. drive you. And then you married him. Yeah, don't disrespect. And then, you know, he kind of did lean a little bit so into the Dallas dude, Cowboys. Right? He was a great you dude. You still talk to him or no? We still talk. We talk every year at our wedding anniversary. That's we just great. celebrated our 20th. Wow. Um, and on holidays and birthdays. You did he get remarried or no? To like the Cowboys. He is almost, he's pretty Oof. much remarried. He met a woman that had a child. He wanted, he's last minute dude. he wanted kids and I didn't want kids. Like, I already knew I didn't want kids. Too much. So he met somebody that had a child and, and he's raised that child and they're so happy. Happy and he's so happy and he's closer to his family in Florida and so it worked. It really well, listen, easy divorce. We didn't have to go to lawyers. We we mediated the whole thing with the mediator. Good. He did good. try and steal my. He did try and get the Jordan jersey, my Jordan signed. jersey, my signed Jordan jersey in the divorce. How'd you get that jersey? Um, I got it. I was. I was. I, I'm, I'm not yet ever met Jordan. I was at a club and these guys. It was a there was yeah, a convention. Dennis Rodman, in, go ahead. There was a convention in town. They had these trading cards. Yeah. And they came up to me and my husband and they're like, "Hey, we have these trading cards. You just send it in. It's good for a autographed Jordan jersey by Tops." Of course, my husband really? was like, "That's a scam." Like yeah. they want a couple DVDs and some photos. And I said to him, "Whether it is or it isn't, let's just give them the stuff and take it." I walked to the post office. We were in Kansas City. I remember walking in the snow by myself to the post office because he didn't believe the whole thing mm -hmm. at all. He wasn't down. We get home from that gig. The jersey is there wow. for real. Wow. So then the FBI Dude, sends it? me a letter. Go ahead. That too many cards came back and there weren't that many jerseys. So there was some sort of a scam so going on. Some people on. Wow. got screwed. And I think some people got screwed. Yeah. I mailed mine right away, whether my card was real yeah. or not. I went right to that post office. And uh, so I fought for that thing. So you know, you deserve husband, it because you're the one who wanted it. He yeah, was skeptical. The yeah. ex husband kept it. I don't blame him. No, That's he the... tried. Oh, you have it. So I had to go to a lawyer for just that one thing. And in the last That's minute funny. paperwork, it said the Jordan jersey. So I went and hired a lawyer, 2500 bucks. He looks <laughs> it over. He's like, go to Big Five Sporting Goods. Buy the guy a Jordan jersey. It doesn't say tops, authenticated, signed, framed. <laughs> it says none of that. It just says Jordan jersey. I'm like, So Boom, you gave him a forgazy done. Jordan jersey. <laughs> so I went and I bought <laughs> an I'm one. not Jordan yeah. jersey. And that was what he got. Nice. Yeah, it's funny. People pointing out the dichotomy between yesterday and today. Yesterday, Tim Tebow was sitting there. And now Lisa Ann's sitting there. And he said he still loves Jets fans. He did. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, I pay attention. He's jacked. Dude. So how was it when you hooked up with Tim Tebow? I didn't. He's no? very religious. I don't think I, he'd I, be in for the girl in the He's business. with Miss Universe anyway. You never know. Really? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. They'll have beautiful babies. He's beautiful in person. If they have babies, yeah. No, he's the, one of the... I've said a million times, he is not even arguably the single greatest looking man I've ever I met mean, in my life. I mean, his arms. Piercing eyes. Really? And a good his great dude. great voice. Yeah, I, fo I fell for him. I make no bones How about it. How did you ever look at his eyes? All I could look at uh, were those biceps. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I got to be lucky to be with Tim Tebow. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Lisa, it's good meeting you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. I hope I didn't answer too many of your questions no, you the wrong did good. way. The uh, social media handle, I guess, at on At The Real all... Lisa Ann for everything. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Uh, at The Real Lisa Ann. There you go. Lisa Ann experiences the podcast. The book is Life Back. She'll join us this fall for uh, fantasy football talk. And clearly... Knows her stuff, and uh, we appreciate you coming in. I'll see you guys every Friday until you're sick of me, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Not till the fall, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no I'm, I'm going skiing next week. I got a lot to do before football nice. season. Nice. Well, thanks so much for coming. Great we meeting. appreciate it. Quick break. We'll continue right after this on The Fan.